everyone, I'm Ma'am Jean Gideshon and I will be your subject teacher for this school year. So our first discussion will be tools and equipment in preparing egg dishes. This lesson introduces cooking of different egg dishes which are well loved by everybody. Each dish has its own way of cooking or preparing them. The preparation of egg dishes is produced using tools, utensils, and equipment, as well as ingredients. These are served in attractive forms at affordable cost to attract a lot of people. Let's have our learning objectives for this day. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to define mise en place. I hope you still remember the definition of the word mise en place. Identify the different cooking tools, utensils, and equipment for egg preparation. So, in egg preparation, there are different tools, utensils, and equipment that we can use. But for this lesson, or for this day, we will be more talking about specific utensils or equipment that we can use in egg preparation. And for the last one, Explain how to assemble and prepare ingredients for menu items. Before we begin to our discussion, let us answer the following questions. For what meal of the day you usually cook and eat eggs? What is your favorite egg dish? And have you tried preparing it? I'm going to give you at least 5 minutes. So probably if you would ask, for what meal of the day you usually cook and eat eggs, you would say during breakfast. And that is correct. Why? Because egg is considered as breakfast meal. But not only breakfast that we can serve eggs. We can also serve egg dishes during lunch, during merienda, or even snacks, or even in supper or dinner. What is your favorite egg dish? Is it hard-boiled? Is it soft-boiled? Is it scrambled, omelette, sunny-side-up, or any other egg dishes? Have you tried preparing it? I'm hoping that at least two to three egg dishes you know how to prepare. But don't worry, as we go along on our discussion, we will be discussing more egg preparation. As define the word mise en place or how to perform mise en place. Mise en place refers to the gathering, weighing, organizing, and preparing of all needed tools and ingredients before the actual cooking. In short, mise en place is getting everything ready before starting to cook. Mise en place is easy. And being organized and prepared in the kitchen saves time and frustration. Trying to multitask between ingredient preparation and cooking could be a recipe for disaster. Mise en place saves time by having everything ready to combine. It eliminates the chance of culinary disasters that occur from lack of preparation. For the word mise en place, we're not just only talking about the tools, utensils, and equipment as well as the ingredients. But we're just also referring to the working area. So see to it that everything is clean, that everything is organized, that everything is ready before starting to cook. And that is mise en place. Let us define the word eggs. Eggs are poultry products from chicken, duck, and quail that eaten as Food. It is a food product produced from poultry that is used as both an ingredient and a main dish for baked foods. Eggs have a hard shell of calcium carbonate enclosing a liquid by a single yolk or an occasional double yolk and an air cell. So as we go along on our discussion for our next lessons, we will be discussing more about eggs. Our first tool, we have cutler. 
An egg cuddler, it is a porcelain or pottery cup with a lid that is used to prepare a dish called cuddled eggs. An egg is broken into the cup, the top screwed on, and the cup submerged in simmering water until the egg is cooked. The eggs are soft cooked and similar to poached eggs, but the eggs are cooked more slowly than a boiled egg. The cuddler is then closed with the lid and partially immersed in boiling water for a few minutes. So that is the first tool, which is cuddler. Who is an egg cooker or sometimes it is called egg boiler? It is an electric appliance which steam cook eggs in the shell. Some also have a flat insert for cooking omelettes, fried eggs, or scrambled eggs. Most egg cookers also have inserts or cups for steam poaching. It is a kitchen appliance used to boil several eggs at a time. It is known also as an egg boiler in which it is a kitchen appliance used to boil several eggs at a time. So that is... An egg cooker or what we call an egg boiler. The tool that we can use in egg preparation is crepe pan. A shallow slope-sided skillet, 6 to 8 inches in diameter. This range from inexpensive lightweight pans to sophisticated electric models. Some of which cook the crepes on what appears to be the outside of the pan. A crepe pan, it is a flat or round bottom pan that is shaped to effectively cook a thin crepe. The addition of a non-stick surface or well-seasoned surface will enable the crepe to be easily removed and cooked to a golden brown color with a tender and moist texture. But do not worry if you do not have a crepe pan at home, a small omelette pan will do a nice double duty job. So that is a crepe pan. The screen are the different crepe dishes. A crepe dish, it is a type of very thin cooked pancake that can be used as the basis of a savory or a sweet recipe. Crepes can be made in almost any of shallow pan with sloping sides. Again, if you don't have a crepe pan, a small omelette pan, will do. This time, we have an egg cup. It is a small container designed to hold a soft cooked egg upright in its shell for table service. An egg cup, sometimes called an egg server. It is an item of tableware used for serving and holding boiled eggs within their shell. Egg cups have an upwardly concave portion to hold the egg and a flat bottom base. So that is an egg cup. Now we have custard cups. A small deep individual bowl shaped dishes designed for oven use. They are useful for cooking or serving other foods as well as custards. Custard cups, it is a small heat-resistant dish, typically of porcelain or glass, intended for use as a vessel in which a custard is baked and served. That is, custard cups. You have seen on the screen are the different custard dishes. Custard, it is a sweet pudding-like dessert that is usually made with eggs. Baked custard is made with a combination of eggs, milk or cream, sugar and sometimes flavoring, even chocolate or spices that is cooked in a small dishes sitting in a pan of water. The result is a smooth, creamy, and rich custard. Next tool is an omelette pan. It consists of two shallow rectangular or semicircular pans attached by hinges. Each pan has a handle. A traditional omelet pan is made with low curved edges and a wide diameter bottom to enable the omelet to be rolled easily. 
It is best to have a pan with a non-stick bottom to assist with the omelette rolling and a metal handle so that it can be used in a broiler if desired. So, that is omelette pan. In cuisine, an omelette or omelette is a dish made from beaten eggs, fried with butter or oil in a frying pan. It is quite common for the omelette to be folded around fillings such as cheese, chives, vegetables, mushrooms, meat, or some combination of the above. So on your screen are the examples of omelette dish. Another tool that we can use is an egg piercer. It is a sharp pointed tool for gently pricking a very small hole in the large end of an eggshell before hard cooking. A clean, preferably sterilized thumbtack, pin, or needle can also be used for piercing. An egg piercer pierces the air packet of an eggshell with a small needle to keep the shell from cracking during hard boiling. Piercing may allow some air to escape and some water to seep into the egg during cooking, which may make peeling easier. So the purpose of an egg piercer is to make the peeling easier. So that is an egg piercer. Another tool, it is an egg poacher. A rack that holds one egg-sized cups over simmering water. A small colander-like form that holds an egg as it poaches in simmering water. An egg poacher, it is a kitchen tool that enables eggs to be easily cooked when poaching is desired. There are a variety of different utensils for this purpose, such as individual metal cups, groups of connected cups, poaching spoons, microwavable poaching cups, poaching pans with poaching cups, and electric egg poachers. But do not worry if we don't have an egg poacher, we can still poach egg. There are different ways on how to poach egg. And that is another discussion as we go along on our lesson. So this is an egg poacher. To another tool and this is a quiche dish. It is a round shallow straight-sided ceramic or porcelain dish usually with scallop edges or used in the oven. Sometimes it is also called a plan or tart dish and it is available in many sizes. Round tart pans are also sometimes referred to as quiche pans. With their upright sides, you get more filling into the shell and a neater. More regular slice of quiche when serving. But if we do not have a quiche dish, a pie plate or pan of the same size will substitute nicely. So that is a quiche dish. On your screen are mouth-watering recipes. So those are quiche dish. It is a savory egg-based dish that's cooked in tastes like a tart or a pie. You could describe a quiche as an omelette or a non sweet custard that is baked inside a pie crust. Eggs are essential for making a quiche often mixed with cheese, vegetables, seafoods, or meat. Next to these are egg ring. A round band with or without a handle to hold the fried or poached egg during cooking. An egg is simply cracked open and dropped into the ring that is placed into a baking pan or skillet or frying pan. In addition to keeping the egg round in a shape as it cooks, egg rings keep the egg from spreading around the pan so more eggs can be cooked at the same time. Time. So that is an egg ring. Another tool is an egg scissors. It is a circular gadget for offering soft cooked eggs. When its scissor type handle is operated, 
a series of teeth or blade clips of the top of the egg. Egg scissors used to remove the top of soft cooked eggs. This circular gadget has a scissor style handle. It's positioned over the top of the egg and when the handle is operated, a ring of teeth or a ring blade clips of the top third of the egg shell. It is indeed a pair of egg scissors used to cut off the top of soft boiled eggs in the shell. So that is an egg scissors. Another is an egg separator. From the word itself, we are separating the yolk from the egg whites. A small cup centered in a round frame made of plastic, metal, or ceramic. The cup catches the yolk while slots around the frame let the white slip through the center beneath. An egg separator, it is a tool used to separate the yolk of an egg from the egg white. Those not wishing to purchase a device to separate their eggs for them can simply crack the egg into their hand, but be sure that your hands are clean. Fingers are very tiny distance apart and allow the egg white to slide through their fingers while the yolk remains. So that is an egg separator. Another tool that we can use is an egg slicer. It is a device which cuts a hard-cooked egg into neat slices with one swift stroke. An egg slicer is a food preparation utensil used to slice filled hard-boiled eggs quickly and evenly. An egg slicer consists of a slotted dish for holding the egg and a hinge plate of wires or blades can be closed to slice. So that is an egg slicer. Next tool is a souffle dish. It is a deep straight-sided dish designed for oven use. It may also serve as a casserole dish. Souffle dish are available in different sizes. A straight-sided casserole, uncoated saucepan, or baking dish of the same size can be substituted. An oven-proof dish with straight sides that is typically made of porcelain, this piece of bakeware may be referred to as a souffle dish is constructed with straight sides which helps the souffle to rise upward as it bakes and expands above the sides of the dish. That is a souffle dish. Now on your screen are examples of different souffle dishes. It is a light spongy baked dish made by typically by adding flavored egg yolks to stiffly beaten egg whites. These are any of various light dishes made with beaten egg whites. The name souffle comes from the French verb souffleur, which means to blow up or pop up. This accurately describes what happens when a souffle is baked. The two main parts of a souffle are a custard base or a creamy sauce and egg whites that have been beaten to form a meringue. So those are souffle dishes. Another tool is an egg wedger. It is similar to slicer, however, it cuts the egg into six equal parts rather than into thin slices. The wedger holds the egg upright as wires are pulled over to cut the wedges. Designed to cut eggs into six perfectly even slices, the wedger helps to improve your presentation and reduce preparation times. An egg slicer is a food preparation utensil used to slice filled hard-boiled eggs quickly and evenly. An egg slicer consists of a slotted dish for holding the egg and a hinge plate of wires or blades that can be closed to slice. So that is an egg wedger. 
And for our last tool, utensil, is we have an egg beater. It is a small device having one or usually two blades, each having several stiff oval wires at the tip. It is a handheld kitchen utensil with rotating blades used for beating, whipping, or mixing. An example of an egg beater is what someone would use to whip heavy cream into whipped cream. So that is an egg beater. Some utensils and gadgets are designed especially for preparing eggs, although egg cooking can be accomplished with the usual pots, pans, beaters, and bowls ordinarily found in most kitchens. Some are limited to egg use only, such as the electric egg cooker, while others, such as custard cups, come in handy for a variety of foods. You may enjoy having a utensil for every use, but if your budget or storage space is limited, do not despair. Egg cooking can be as simple as you want it to be. If you enjoy imagining up things a bit, there are several pieces of equipment and specialty gadgets you may find interesting. So those are the different tools, utensils, or equipment you can use in egg preparation. Now, let's proceed in assembling and preparing ingredients for menu items. Once the needed tools and ingredients are ensured that are prepared, the next thing to do is to check your recipe calculation and study carefully the measurements of the ingredients, especially if the recipe is to be enlarged or reduced depending on the number of serving portions required. Remember, miscalculation of one ingredient can ruin the expected quality of the product. Check the ingredients, the amount in weight or volume, and the description or specification of each as required in the recipe. The specification describes ingredients in specific terms. Next thing that we need to do is to check the ingredients, the amount in weight or volume, and the description or specification of each as required in the recipe. So, what is a recipe? A recipe is a set of instructions used for preparing and producing a certain food, dish, or drink. The purpose of a recipe is to have a precise record of the ingredients used, the amounts needed, and the way they are combined. Recipes are important because they contain the information necessary to make a dish properly. As with any set of instructions, you rely on them to give you all of the information you need. So that is the importance of having a recipe. So we need to check the recipe. The following are examples of ingredients specification in a recipe. Again, when we talk about specification, it describes ingredients in specific terms. So, let's say we will be needing 2 cups unsifted all-purpose flour, 1 fourth red and green bell pepper dice, 1 fourth kilo white onions chopped, and 1 kilo boiled potatoes, skinned, and mashed. So, notice the underlined words. Those are the examples of ingredients specification in a recipe. Another guidelines is to prepare your ingredients immediately before the start of your preparation. Be sure that the ingredients are all available. So just like what I've said, it is always important to perform the mise en place. Again, mise en place means putting in place. So we know already the importance of mise en place.
Another guidelines is to weigh or measure each ingredient as indicated in the recipe. Check and recheck each measurement. Aside from the ingredients specification, we also need to follow the correct measurement. Now, in your screen, we have different measuring tools that we can use. We have a measuring cups used to measure solid and liquid ingredients. Measuring spoons used to measure small amount of ingredients. A weighing scale used to measure the weight of an item. A measuring glass used to measure liquid ingredients. And for ice cream scoop, it estimated one fourth cup. So those are some examples of measuring tools that we can use. After knowing the ways on how to assemble and prepare the different ingredients, let's now proceed for the general guides in the cleanliness and sanitation in the kitchen. Let's answer this question. Is your kitchen clean and safe? It may look clean, but your kitchen may not be as safe as you hope it would be. Despite efforts to keep the home germ-free, there is still a possibility that foodborne illnesses be caught in the home. So here are some essentials to keep in mind in maintaining cleanliness at the highest standard. For the first general guide, Physical equipment and kitchen layout should be conducive to good sanitary practices. This means that all equipment in the kitchen have sanitary and safety features that make them easy to clean and maintain. They are made of materials like stainless steels or enamelware which are easy to clean. Their parts can easily be taken apart and are easily accessible for easy cleaning to ensure that our physical equipment and kitchen layout are clean or conducive to good sanitary practices. Part of the physical equipment are the kitchen premises. Walls and ceilings should be made of washable materials. The kitchen floors made of sleep-resistant materials that are easy to map. Walls and ceilings must be designed and constructed in a way that is appropriate for the activities conducted on the food premises. Walls and ceilings must be first sealed to prevent the entry of dirt, dust, and pests. Second, unable to absorb grease, food particles, or water. And last, able to be easily and effectively Clean. So, those are the things that must be considered for our kitchen. Another general guide is the flooring should be made to slope forward a central drain or if it is level, there should be drop drains around cooking areas where water or moisture accumulates. Slope floors make the water drain out easily. These floors also ensure no water pools are formed and thus providing no breeding place for insects. With slow floors, you can save the money that you may have to spend on fixing your floors. Other general guides. Level floors are advantageous in facilitating movement of mobile equipment like carts. So, the floors must be designed and constructed in a way that is appropriate for the activities conducted on the food premises. Next, dishes, glasses, utensils, tools, and equipment should be thoroughly cleaned and properly sanitized. For special equipment, there are specific manufacturer's instructions found in the operation and maintenance manual of the equipment. It is advisable to follow the manufacturer's instruction so that our equipment are easy to use or safe to use. For sanitizing our dishes, we need to use warm water in washing tools and equipment. Sanitize by using hot water or safe chemical sanitizers 
especially if a dishwasher is not available. And dry thoroughly all utensils before using again. Washing dishes in hot water actually lifts away food and grime from dirty dishes, which reduces the amount of time you have to spend scrubbing. Hot water is needed to effectively kill bacteria on dishes. It may seem like you can squeeze a little more use out of a dish pan full of cold water, but compromising your family's exposure to bacteria is not worth the extra trouble of running a new pan of hot water. Most of us do our dishes by simply soaping them up and running them under room temperature water. We think that just because dirt and grime no longer appear on our tableware and cooking utensils, they are 100% squeaky and sparkling clean. But how wrong are we? Washing our dishes with just soap and tap water is simply not good enough. This is because this method removes only visible dirt of your dishes and utensils. It doesn't sanitize nor disinfect your dishes from germs and other forms of bacteria. That is why it is important to use hot water when washing your dishes. You might be afraid of getting your hands scalded, but don't be a wimp. Get a heavy duty glove for dishwashing. And enjoy the following benefits of using hot water when cleaning your dishes and utensils at home. So we have four importance why we need to use hot water. First, for faster dishwashing. Second, it lifts away grease. Third, it reduces drying time. And fourth, it sanitizes our dishes. So that is the important or that is the reason why we need to use warm water or hot water when sanitizing our dishes. For the last general guidelines, air drying is the best way of drying used tools and utensils. Use tea towel in drying clean tools and utensils before putting them away. The next time you put your clean dishes away, you may want to be extra careful that they are dry. Why? Because dishes stored away while wet can become contaminated with bacteria. Unfortunately, using the towel dry method after washing the dishes doesn't completely eradicate moisture. Putting your still wet dishes away in a dark cabinet is the quickest way to encourage the growth of bacteria. Aside from your wash dishes, dump dish towels are also the perfect home for bacteria. Anytime you hold wet dishes, you have the chance that they'll get recontaminated. Because... A moist, warm environment provides good conditions for bacterial growth. There are bacteria everywhere. If at all possible, do dry your dishes before you store them. So those are the general guidelines in the cleanliness and sanitation in the kitchen. And now that we are done in our lesson, you are now ready to answer different activities. So, for every discussion, you are required to answer activities in our module. For this lesson, you will be answering three sets of activities. For our first activity is identification type in which you're going to identify what has been asked or what is referred in the following statement. So that is for activity 1. And for our activity 2 is the word hand. 
find and circle all of the given words that are hidden in the grid. The words may be hidden in any direction, either horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. So that is activity number two, word hunt. And for our activity three is name me. In which you're going to identify the tools, utensils, and equipment used in egg preparation. And you're going to give one description or one function of each tool. Activity 3, name me. For the deepen activity, what I have learned, you just have to check the appropriate column. So either yes or no. So these are the criteria from our learning objectives. I can identify the tools, utensils, and equipment needed in egg preparation. I can identify the tools, utensils, and equipment that may require cleaning and sanitizing. I can assemble and prepare ingredients for menu items. And for the last, I can demonstrate how to clean and sanitize kitchen tools and equipment. If your answers are all yes, you may now go on with the assessment. But if some of your answers are no, I am sad to say that you need to read and study the lesson again. But I'm hoping that all of your answers are yes. If there are no more questions after answering all the activities and after all answers are yes in the given activity, you may now proceed to the assessment. So that's it. Good day and God bless. But if you still have questions, you may message me in our Schoology or in my Facebook account or through Messenger. Have a good day. God bless.